giving the Lord everything that is in the heart is completely different from giving him the heart. What's the difference? You give him all your pain, all your frustration, all the hurts. You're just giving him what's within the heart. But you are still in control of the heart. When you give him the heart, then he is not only getting the stuff in the heart, you're actually giving him the control of your heart. And so I quickly put together this little reflection so that you can understand that it's important not just to give the Lord what's in your heart, but to give him your heart. The definition of the heart is, the heart is the control center of a person's life. From there, we make life's choices and life's decisions. Listen to what Proverbs 4.23 says, and this is what my wife mentioned. It says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do in life flows from the heart and that's why it's so important for us to understand that God doesn't only want the hurts and the pains and the frustration and the anger and the rebellion he wants the heart itself because if he gets your heart he is then in control. You know, if all we do is pour out to him and give him what's in the heart, but we do not give him the heart, like my wife just said again, give it a few years and the heart's going to be full with the same thing again. Because you're the one still running the show. And when you were running it the first time, you made a mess of it. And then he had to empty it out. But if you don't give him the heart, it will only take a few years. And all the junk, the unforgiveness, the pain, the, the trash, the, the, the hurts, it will start to accumulate and build up again on the inside. So God wants the heart, not just the content. Do we understand so far what the difference is? Good. Mark chapter 7 verse 21 through 23 says... Obscenities, lusts, thefts, murders, adulteries, greed, depravity, deceptive dealings, carousing, mean looks, arrogance, foolishness, all these, this is from the message translation, all these are Vomit from the heart. There is the source of your pollution. You see why the Lord wants the heart? Do you see how many ugly things the Bible says the heart can contain? And you know and I know that when the trash in the house is full and we empty it, it only takes a day and the trash is full again. It's the same thing with the heart. All these things that was mentioned just a while ago are contents of the heart. It comes from the heart. God wants the heart, not only what's in the heart. God wants control. And giving God control is not an easy thing. You know why? Because when we are not in control, we can become quite uneasy. When we are not in control, we can feel quite unbalanced in our lives. And, and just feel like nothing will ever go well. But God wants the heart because God wants control. He wants to run your life. He doesn't only want 
to run the problems in your life. He wants to run your life. And all we have been doing so far is allowing him to run the problems in our lives. But he wants to run our lives. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 says, Oh my son, give me your heart. That's Proverbs 23 and 26. It says, Oh my son, give me your heart. It didn't say give me your inner vows. It didn't say give me your hurts and your pains. It says, give me your heart. Take delight in following my ways. And that's really what it is to give your heart to the Lord. You're saying to him, I'm ready to follow your ways. I'm ready to do your will and not my will. When only the content of the heart is given to God, listen carefully, and not the heart itself, we find ourselves on a spiritual roller coaster ride through life. You see, if we don't give God the heart, some days we're up and some days we're down. Some days we're faithful and some days we're not so faithful. Talking about God. Some days... We're in the spirit and some days we couldn't go deeper in the flesh. Some days we have a spiritual high. You know, like some people said the night they were talking in tongues even after the service, the following day, that's called a spiritual high. And then some days there is a deep spiritual low. How does that come about? What causes that? That happens when we give God just the troubles and the pains and the hurts and the problems, but we do not give him the heart itself where he can actually run the show. Are you with me so far? When the heart is wholly given to God and God can really take control, he then start to work and build in us beauty for ashes Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 says work hard to show the results of your salvation in other words when we get saved somebody said it tonight it's just the beginning it's not the end you have to develop you have to build it says Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Listen, for God is working in you, in your heart, giving you the desire and the power to please Him. Now, He can only work in us, in the heart, if we give Him the heart. So when you read this scripture, it's not automatic. We must give him the heart. He wants to work. He lives in there, remember? He wants to work. He wants to perfect what he started. But if all we do is give him the trouble, the pain, the shame, the hurts, the unforgiveness, that's a good thing. But that's not enough. Because then that's the roller coaster ride forever. Psalms chapter 16 verse 5 and 6 says listen to what the psalmist says so beautiful Lord you are my portion and my cup of blessing you are my portion and my cup of blessing in other words the psalmist is says is saying I am not looking for stuff I have found you you are what I want and from there he says, I truly have been blessed. Because you see, for some reason or the other, it's a difficult thing to turn over completely our hearts to God. Because we tend to think that if we ever do that, then we might not make it successfully in life. 
listen the psalmist again says in psalms chapter 4 and verse 7 he says you have given me greater joy listen because he's making a comparison he says you have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine He's making a comparison. He's, comparis he's comparing his life completely run by God, completely given to God with those who find joy in what the world offers. He compares his Christian life completely surrendered, completely run by God with people that finds enjoyment in prosperity he says you give me greater joy than those who reap their harvest i mean we all know that money brings a certain level of happiness in life we would be foolish to deny that and not just foolish liar because money does bring a form of contentment and happiness and satisfaction but the psalmist says i have given my whole heart to the lord he is completely running my life and then he makes the bold statement he says you give me greater joy than those who have given themselves completely to finding joy in the things of the world so the psalmist tells us there that there is blessing and a reward of giving God the heart and not just the content of the heart Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3 says to give them beauty for ashes ashes is symbolic of a life that is destroyed in shambles a life that is bitter angry lacks joy and peace says God when we give our whole heart to him he actually gives us beauty for ashes it says he gives them joy for sorrow brothers and sisters I'll tell you I've been a pastor now for 30 years I think in church and I'm not just talking about here talking about churches around the world you find a lot of sad sucks when you sell yourself out to God and you give him your whole heart, sorrow is turned into joy. The Bible says he gives you praise for the spirit of heaviness. But it only comes when you give him the heart and not just the content of the heart. Psalms 30 verse 11 and 12 says, you have turned my weeping into dancing. There's Ira. Ira says she was dancing in here in the pre-service gathering how can you know when you have given I'm, I'm just about to be finished how can you know when you have given your whole heart to God very important because from here tonight you can actually walk out of here knowing if you need to make some changes and I can tell you some of us really need need to how can you know when you have given your whole heart to God one you, lo you lose interest in temporal, earthly things. In specific, money, movies, attractions, entertainment, possessions. Now, don't misquote me. I'm not saying that you don't need these things. They just don't interest you anymore in other words it's not like you're running after it anymore you know the other day I was planning to buy a nice big TV for my parlor and then I thought to myself when last did I watch TV what would it serve me what purpose you know when you've given your whole heart to the Lord Hollywood movies does not attract you again I mean really and truly I can't tell you when last I watch a Hollywood movie my daughter Lucilla and my daughter Yanni once in a blue moon and I can't tell you when last the moon was blue 
Now and again, they would, they would send me a, 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 a clipping of a nice, nice movie. They know first of all that I will not watch a movie with sexual content. And I will not watch a movie with one bad word. So after they have screened, they would say, Dad, this is something you would really love. And even so. Well, they're here, so I don't want to say the rest. But I don't necessarily watch it. Talk about music, worldly music. When your whole heart is given to God, you, the worldly music doesn't matter the beat or the rhythm. It does not attract, it actually repels when your whole heart is given to God. Number two, how can you know when you have given your whole heart to God? You have incredible peace despite chaos and adversity. When your whole heart has been given to God, doesn't matter what you're going through and what is happening, you have deep-seated peace within your life. Number three. How can you know when you've given your whole heart to God? You feel strong in Him. Weakness is gone. You feel strong. You actually feel like no matter what comes your way, you are more than ready for it. Your whole heart is, and only He can do these things in the heart. And that's why it's so important to give Him the heart and not just the content. You feel strong. Number four, you find true happiness and purpose. True happiness. You know, it's amazing. And I'm not telling you that everything happens in an overnight. It's a journey. It's a process. But you know, you can actually speed it up. There was a time my wife and I, many years ago, I was still working for Better Try Later. And I desperately wanted a house. And I must be honest with you. You know why I wanted a house? Because everybody else had one. It's not that I needed it. Everybody else has one. And, and it's a mark of success. Casa de Saldivar. Dang it. You've made it, buddy. Only to find out that after you've had the Casa de Saldivar... Uh, and I like it again. I need a bigger one. And then after that you call it Mansion de Saldiva. And after that you die and leave it behind. You find a true happiness and purpose. You know, even in life today, I still don't own a house. And if you ask me, I still don't want a house. I don't need it. I don't want one. Because when you give your whole heart to God, you find true happiness. You find true purpose. Number five, you experience love in a deeper way. You know why our hearts are broken again and again and again and again? Because we try to find love in all the wrong places. I'll tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt. When you find the true, rich, all-fulfilling love of God. Yes, you will still want earthly love. But that's not because you're looking just for satisfaction. You want it because that's the way God designed us. But, but when you don't find the true love of God, which only comes when you give your whole heart to God, when you don't find that, then somebody will break your heart. And they'll break it again and again and again. And with every break, there is a big hurt. And it goes multiplying. You see, God gives things that money cannot buy when you give your whole heart to Him. Number six, you feel fearless. Amazing, when COVID was here, 
first of all, I didn't have time to have fear because I was one of the first ones that caught it. So I didn't have time to fear, but I laugh and I laugh because I used to go out by Coca-Cola there where they sell the water and stuff. And one day when I went out there, I saw this lady. I mean, I, I had to look again. Was she from Mars or Jupiter or one of those places? She was completely cloaked down with a whole suit. And with, with have you ever seen those all diving masks where the cover was on the whole head with a glass pretty much that's what the lady had on just a lighter version and she was all gloved up and all of that and I laughed to myself and said brother if that's the way I have to live let me die that's not living you become fearless when everybody on the island was short with money here we were giving over a period of about four months over a hundred thousand dollars worth of groceries to the community. I must confess one thing. In COVID was when I really get to like Raymond. They say it's for poor people. I guess that's why I eat it. But I like only the chicken one. The beef and the shrimp doesn't taste good. So you feel fearless, really. Because, because you're so fully conscious that God is for you. And when you know God is for you and he is in control and he is running your life. Why would God let somebody come in and destroy what he loves? Impossible. And number seven, your conscience comes alive. That's what George mentioned. Your conscience comes alive. It becomes our moral compass. The more you give more of your heart to God, things that never used to bother you before start to bother you. You can't just live with it. Because God is pouring his nature and his character into you. And then number eight, convictions to repentance are constant. I hear some preachers say that once you've given your life to Jesus and you have truly repented of all your sins, you don't ever need to repent again. I don't know what part of hell they took that out from. But that's not biblical. We sin every single day. And I'm not talking about big sins. But we sin every day. We fall short every day. When you give your whole heart to God. God will be so quick to let you know what you did wrong. And the conviction will be so deep. That you'll have to repent immediately. You know this is, this is now a long time ago. As I was maturing in my faith. Growing in the things of the Lord. I remember one day. Um, long, long, long time. Many, many years ago. I did something. Or, or I was treating my wife a little bit rough. Like most men do. And when I walked away. The Holy Spirit told me. That wasn't right. You need to go back and say sorry. That's conviction. He puts the conviction on the inside. You know, if we would give our hearts to the Lord, our marriages would be thriving. The population of Belize would be bigger than the Middle East. And number nine, the last one. How can you know when you've given your whole heart to God? Your hunger and thirst for the Lord becomes unquenchable. Doesn't matter how much you seek him. Doesn't matter how much hours you spend with him. It's like it's never enough. When you give him your whole heart. You want more and you want more and you want more. And so through these things you can recognize tonight. If you have given God your whole heart or you've just been giving him what's in the heart. I can guarantee you the Lord reminded me tonight with this. Tell the people 
I'm grateful for everything they've been giving me from their heart. But I want the heart. When he runs the show, the show will be beautiful. The giving of the heart to God is not a one-time thing. You know, like coming to the altar and say, All right, Lord, I lay it down. Today is the day I give it all to you. And you really meant it. But then tomorrow, you take it all back. I want you to walk away with this tonight. The giving of your heart to the Lord is not a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. Every day, you must choose to give God full control. Every day. Because he won't take it from you. So it's not like saying today with all your might, God, I give you my whole heart. Take it forever. You got to do that every single day. Because you are still you. And the all you will be fighting to take the reins back again to control the show. Every day, it's a conscious decision. God, I give you my whole heart. You run the show today. Your will, not mine. You do what you need to do in my life. Every day, you must choose to let God have his way. Every day, you must choose to live for him and not for self. Every day becomes a sacrifice of obedience. Every day will require faith and trust that God knows what he is doing every single day. For you to give your whole heart to him, it will require faith and trust every single day. Because you can't see and we don't necessarily know the grandness of God and his ways. We have to trust him in faith. God. I don't understand. But I am completely giving it to you again today. You take control. Listen to what Job says and I close with this. Job chapter 23 and verse 10. But he knows the way that I take. Listen. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. In other words, God, this is not like the Olympics where some people get bronze and some get silver and some get nada. When it comes to God and you give him your whole heart and you come to him in faith and trust. God you run this show. You take control. Job says that at the end you will come forth like gold. In other words your life will become so precious. So valuable. Will be such a standout for your community. For your relatives. For, for society. People will watch you and say wow what a life. Brothers and sisters, it's not an easy walk, but it's a very rewardable walk. Take sacrifice every day. But I want to encourage you. I did not have this plan. The Lord showed me this just a couple of days ago. God wants your heart, not just the content. 